I've got a very interesting lens to show you today. It's a new one from TT Artisan and it promises to be a little bit special. So stay tuned. Well, hey everybody, thank you for checking in once again and welcome to another episode. So today we're going to be looking at this lens. This is the 250mm f5.6 mirror lens and it's from TT Artisan and this has got to be one of the most interesting new lenses that I've seen in quite a while. There are no glass elements in this lens, it operates entirely by mirrors in the same way that a telescope, a reflecting telescope operates. They used to be really popular and I've not seen one for many years. There were lots around in the 70s and in the 80s and at that time they were a very popular choice because they were a little bit cheaper than uh, conventional telephoto lenses and they were a lot lighter and smaller than conventional lenses also. But I've not seen a new one for many years, although I believe that Tokina and Samyang actually make one, uh, a 300mm f6.3 version. This is slightly shorter at 250mm and it's f5.6. That aperture is not adjustable because of the way this lens is constructed. If you think about it, what we have in this lens is a, a big circular mirror or a sort of a half circular mirror uh, at the back of the lens and that then throws the light onto another mirror facing backwards which is at the front of the lens which then reflects the light through a hole onto the sensor. So it's entirely reflective in the way it works and it's just not possible to build an adjustable aperture into this design of lens. So it's a fixed f5.6 but as I've found that is not a handicap with one of these. This lens can make some unique and stunning images and when I say unique I mean unique. There are no images like those from a mirror lens. They can be stunning, delicious, unusual, astonishing. They're very, very unconventional looking. They've got unique background blur and we'll look at that in a little more detail soon. This lens, uh, another big news item for this lens, this lens has an M42 mount and I'm really pleased to see that because that means that not only can it be used on all digital mirrorless cameras, it can also be used on film cameras as well. This will mount to any M42 film camera. So it's a really versatile lens. It will mount to any mirrorless with an M42 adapter or it'll just go straight onto any uh, film camera. Uh, SLR that's got an M42 mount as well. So a really wide range of applications for this lens. With a 250mm focal length it's got loads of reach so it's great for candid street portraits, it's good for studio type portraits, it's great for shots of nature and natural things like birds or animals and it's also good for general photography as well. I've just you know been out and about just shooting whatever I can see with it, whatever happens to catch my eye. It's very small and light. I did say these lenses used to be well known for being small and light. Well mirror lenses haven't changed in that regard and they're still small and light. This lens is no bigger, remember it's on an adapter here, but it's actually no bigger than, I should say, certainly than most 50mm f1.2 vintage lenses. So it really is compact. It's got very compact dimensions for a lens with such long reach. Let's have a closer look at the lens before we go on to look at what it can do. So there is the lens on the camera and you can see that it's really not 
very large at all. The adapter is adding about an inch or so, maybe a little more, but the lens itself is really not that long at all and isn't that much bigger than most 50mm f1.2 lenses that I've seen and used. There's the front of the lens and you can just see in there the mirror at the back. This circle at the front here, that's actually the rear facing mirror, the reflective surface is towards the rear behind what you can see there and that's the uh, mirror that throws the image backwards onto the sensor so we can get some idea of what's going on inside the mirror lens just by sort of looking down its throat like this but that's how it works a mirror at the back throws the image onto a mirror at the front which throws it back onto the sensor a very neat design indeed let's take the lens off the camera which is nice and easy because it's just an M42 screw mount so it'll just undo nice and easy it's got rather a long thread so there's our lens off the camera and there you can see the M42 thread mount it's all nicely made and nicely machined and in fact the general feeling of quality on this lens is very nice indeed now if we look down the lens this way we can see the actual rear facing mirror that we could see at the front there and that's the mirror that throws the image back onto the sensor that's quite interesting we turn the lens around we can see it's got this very big ribbed focus grip here and that's very easy to find when you've got the camera to your eye all the easier in fact because there is only one ring on here there's no aperture ring it's a fixed f5.6 okay that's got the lens back on the camera i don't want to get my sensor dusty so let's have a look now at what this lens can actually do so the unique selling point of this lens has got to be its incredible background blur background blur from mirror lenses is like nothing else it's unusual, it's incredible, it's extraordinary. At times it's a little bit wild and badly behaved. At others, it's very, very beautiful indeed. The background blur from this lens is something else. What we get from this lens and its characteristic signature visual impression is circles, background blur, makes circles point light sources in the background blur makes circles because this lens has a hole in the center of its lens it's because of the construction it's because of that hole in the center of the lens that we get this donut shape it's entirely because the central area of the optical path is well blocked i suppose but it's got this sort of region when nothing's going on right in the center and so we get these rings in the background blur and it's just extraordinary occasionally it can be a little bit wild and badly behaved it is sometimes the equivalent of the naughty kids at the back of the class who sit chewing gum writing little messages to each other flicking bits of paper and maybe smoking the occasional fag it is a bit of a bad lad it's a bit of a naughty boy occasionally but most of the time it's beautiful it's just incredible we get those circles in the background they move and dance they give an impression of swirl of flow of movement we get a kind of light trail effect sometimes it's a dynamic feel it's like flowing water it can look like something's moving in the shot sometimes those little donuts they'll pile up on top of each other and sort of reverberate in the image they'll visually and optically reverberate in the back of the image back of the shot and they'll pile up on each other and make this incredibly soft beautiful sort of array of 
circles and shapes and patterns. It just becomes extraordinary. It can be a little bit unpredictable, but play around with it, experiment with it, get those distances right, and my goodness, you'll get a very, very beautiful effect uh, from the blur from this lens. Being a long lens, the f5.6 fixed aperture doesn't matter. This is a 250mm lens. It's a very long focal length, and as we know, the longer the focal length, the more inherent blur your lens will make. So this one is a bona fide blur monster, no doubt about it. Colour from this lens is really strong. It's very vibrant, it's very solid, and it has a sort of a reliable quality with something of the feel of film, actually. Certainly on the A7, it gave images with a slightly chromey sort of look to the colours. Colours on some mirror lenses that I've used in the past have been a little bit washed out and a little bit weak, but those were older lenses dating from the 70s and 80s, and the youngest of those that I used is now 40 years old. This is brand new and the difference shows because while the colours in the older lenses were a little bit washed out and weak, from this one they're very strong, very solid with lots of depth, lots of body and lots of strength. Part of the reason the colours are so good, so strong and so defined is that contrast is very strong on this lens as well. It has very good contrast and that really sort of gets behind and holds up the colours and gives them a foundation and something to stand on as it were. It will wash out in direct sunlight just as any lens will but it's fairly resistant actually to sunlight. It's pretty resistant and I had to really try and catch the light in order to wash out the shot. Eventually it washed out but this lens as it stands is pretty resistant to washing out in sunlight. It's very sharp. All of its images are very clearly defined. There's no softness in any of the images. Everything's very pin sharp and very, very clearly present and defined. So a very sharp lens indeed. And there's no chromatic aberration on this lens. Absolutely none that I could see. It may be that if you zoom in very, very, very close indeed, you might be able to see a little bit of colour separation, but as it stands, the way I looked at the images, just looking through them in the ordinary way, I couldn't see any trace of chromatic aberration at all from this lens. So if you don't like chromatic aberration, and I know there are many photographers who really don't like it at all, if you're one of those photographers, this could be the lens for you. No CA at all that I could see. So this is certainly a visually interesting lens that makes very, very interesting images. It can be a little bit wild on occasion, but that's part of its character. I consider this, I consider this lens to be an art lens, a little bit like the Helios 40 85mm f1.5 or the Olympus Suico 55mm f1.2. Those are both lenses with a wild side. And just like them, I consider this one to be an art lens. It will make you a fabulous portrait. It will do some fantastic general photography and it will lend itself to practical things like uh, nature photography, bird photography, and so on, where you can use its extra reach to uh, maximum advantage. This is a lens that encourages you to explore and to play around and to have fun and to see what you can do with your photography, to expand it a little bit and to take it a little bit further to places that it hasn't gone before. It can sometimes misbehave like any genius. It is a little bit unpredictable, but at its best, it makes images that are stunning, living, vibrant, and they really are 
like images, uh, unlike images rather from any other lens. They are absolutely unique. So there we are. That's probably around about it from me for this week. I hope you've enjoyed that episode. I hope it's been useful and interesting. Thank you for tuning in and watching the show. Many, many thanks go to subscribers for your support. A very heartfelt thanks for that. And many, many thanks also go to patrons for your support. A genuine, sincere, heartfelt thanks for that support too. Thanks to everybody who's given thanks or made comments or left super thanks or engaged with this little channel in anyway and if you think that uh you know this old hippie's not doing too bad a job of keeping the old camera gear alive and of bringing us uh, new gear when it comes around then you might want to become a patron and support the channel and you can do that over at www.patreon.com forward slash xenography and you can do that for as little as one dollar per month as from me, that's it for now. So if you're not doing anything too bothersome, difficult or infuriating next week at around this time, please do join me for a spot more xenography. Cheerio all. <laughs>